Hello, Data Pipeliners, and welcome back to another episode on Writing Data Pipelines with Kedro. Today's episode is a little bit different, a little bit off the beaten path. Today, we're going to be talking about how to contribute back to the Kedro project. Kedro is better because we, as users and individuals, are there to help support the project. And so in today's episode, we're going to be improving the API data set. Now, API data set is actually a wrapper around the requests object. And JSON as an argument is supported by the requests object. However, the API data set does not support that JSON argument. And the reason why you want to have this JSON argument is because it simplifies your workflow. In order to replicate it, what you would have to do is you have to stringify or dump your Python object into a JSON string, pass that JSON string into the data, and then change the content type of the header to application JSON. And so there's a lot of extra steps that go on here. And especially because the data set itself, the API data set is not dynamic, meaning you have to set it up inside of a catalog, it can cause a little bit of difficulty. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be adding JSON as a parameter to our API data set. Now what I have here is I have a PyCharm window open, and this PyCharm window is actually the entire Kedro code base. What I did was I did a git clone, and then I pulled out the URL, um, the git URL for Kedro. And now what I have here in the documentation is actually the contributing.md file, the contributing markdown file. And in here it talks about how we can do our contributions. Now for the developer workflow, we just have to follow some of these instructions. The first is we have to make sure that we have all of the requirements set up. Inside of my project, what I've done is I've actually created a new virtual environment. So what I did was I typed in virtual env VMV in order to create a new virtual environment, and that is available to me right here. The reason why I like using virtual environments is just because I'm very used to them, and I think they're a straightforward way to manage your Python dependencies. Uh, the downside of virtual environments is, of course, the memory footprint that they have since they contain all of your Python libraries. All I have to do is type in make install test requirements, and it's going to go through and grab all of those different requirements, download them into the virtual environment, and then install them for me. Okay, so it finally completed. That took about 16 minutes of time. Let's go ahead and install the git pre-commit. We can do that by using the install pre-commit. And what this is, is it's just a extra function um, that is added to Git so that before you can commit any changes, um, it runs some particular commands. What those exact commands are, actually, I can't recall, but this will be useful for us when we commit any of our changes. Now, while this is getting set up, let's go ahead and take a look at the API data set itself and start to figure out what we want to change. It's located underneath Kedro, Extras, Datasets, and then API, API underscore dataset dot pi. And so here we have it. This is, of course, the exact same source that we saw previously uh, on their web interface. Now, what's interesting here is that I was taking a look at the previous commits for this particular file, and I ran into one that Lim Huang committed uh, just a little while ago. It seems that he actually removed a JSON option from the API dataset. This is kind of fascinating because this is actually what we want to add, correct? Well, if you take a look at the code itself, um, that JSON argument was actually a Boolean. What we want to do is we want to create a JSON argument that takes a Python dictionary. And so the previous incarnation of this JSON parameter was the Boolean input. And so what you could do is you could pass in a true or false to figure out how you wanted to get your data returned to you. Um, looking at the notes here, uh, they decided that they wanted to treat the API dataset similar to the image dataset where it's not that we can modify the return type within the catalog, but we instead get the raw object and then choose our return type as needed. So it's a little bit of an interesting thing, uh, and it means that we don't actually have to worry too much. 
So let's go ahead and add in our JSON argument. All we have to do, it's a, such a simple change. We type in JSON into the acceptable parameters. It'll take a dictionary, which includes a string um, to any, and then we're gonna set that to none. Now what we do is we add in a very simple documentation, um, and we can actually copy the data documentation here, and then just say JSON, the request payload used for post, put, et cetera, re requests passed in to the JSON quarg in the requests object. And then you can also reference this guy here. Let's go ahead and find the actual URL that we want to use. So instead of using the complicated post requests, let's see JSON. Um, and that actually is still the same thing, isn't it? It is right underneath more complicated post requests. Okay, so now that we've added that parameter here, let's go ahead and use that guy. So right inside of this request arcs dictionary, we can type in JSON, JSON. Now, if you take a look at the code, these, this requests arc dictionary gets directly passed into the request request object. And so that's why we can do this because clearly in the documentation, they do the same thing here with the post request. And if we are not too sure, we can of course follow that request um, implementation here. And then we can look for the parameter itself. And here it is right here, JSON, a JSON serial serializable Python object to send into the body of the class. So now that we've added this argument, Let's go ahead and see if we can add some tests for this argument. It's always very important to add some tests in to make sure that the code is working as intended. Here we have our test API dataset. And inside of here, it actually uses the requests mocker. And so this is a library that is built um, to help tests your test your request uh, objects. Uh, it's a pretty cool library. Uh, we can actually create a mocker that has um, parameters that match the API dataset parameters that we want to specify. Let's go ahead and try this out. So I'm honestly not too familiar with this particular API, so we're going to have to give it a go. I believe what we can do is we can just copy the test here for this successfully load with response and then reuse that JSON parameter. So test the successful JSON load with response. We have our test URL, our test method, params. So what we're going to do here is we're going to change the params to our JSON. We can use instead test JSON response data and we were, we're going to pass that in as the JSON parameter. So let's go ahead and use that as test JSON response data. And it looks like we're getting an error, and that's because, of course, the API that we set was only using dictionary. But JSON does support lists. So we can go ahead and add the union operator, um, operator type, which allows us to add in an extra list object. And we have to just go ahead and import that name list from typing. So I go ahead and import that guy. And now we no longer get the highlight. And as you can see, PyCharm, such a beautiful tool, one of my favorites. Now that we've added this JSON test response, let's go ahead and try adding that response data to the JSON output here of the URI. We're not going to use the URL with params. We're just going to use the test URL. And I just want to verify the re register URI and to make sure that we can actually pass in a JSON argument. It's quite possible that the JSON argument might not be available to us. Instead, what we would get is the raw version of that JSON API. Um, so what we can do instead is when we register this guy, we can pass back data, which is the JSON response properly serialized as JSON. And so here we are. 
We don't have to assert that the response text is equal to JSON, but we want to assert that the response JSON is equal to the test JSON response data. So let's go ahead and give this a try by passing a breakpoint and adding in a new configuration. Now to add that configuration, all we need to do is open up our configurations here and then add in a configuration to run the test API dataset. So we have one here that's already running the JSON dataset. We're going to have one for the API dataset. Instead of JSON, we're adding API here. And now we have our no coverage option. And the reason why you want this no cov option here is so that you can put breakpoints into your debugger. But without this no cov option, PyCharm will not be able to debug your test code. Now let's go ahead and rename this guy API dataset and just overwrite our original JSON dataset. I won't be needing it anymore. Now let's run this debug and let's see what happens. We successfully run into the test itself. We import our JSON. We create our API dataset successfully as well. Then we create our mocker, and it looks like we have an error. So it looks like we totally failed this guy. Let's go ahead and go back to the drawing board. Now, I'm pretty sure that this is due to the fact that we changed it from data. Um, sorry, we changed it from text to data. We can instead use text as the response here and try that again. We're successfully stepping through, and when we create the mocker API, looks like it goes okay. And let's run the load. We get a 200 response, which is good for us. And now let's see what happens when we test the response. So we have an instance, and now we're going to see what happens when we try to parse that text. And it looks like it's good. We've passed all of our tests successfully. So we've added our test case for JSON, we've added the JSON API, and we've added the org for the underlying requests object. Let's go ahead and push this guy up. All we have to do here is we check out a new branch, making sure that we are on the master branch first. Uh, I'm pretty sure we are. If we hit git branch we can see that we are on master and the reason why we want to make sure that we're on master is because the guidelines here it asks us to check out for master if we are um, keeping backwards compatibility uh, so we have all of our changes uh, but before we do our changes uh, let's first finish the first time setup and so we've completed the pre-commit we've completed the make install test requirements Let's go ahead and do make test, and this should run all the tests successfully. And then after that, let's go ahead and do make build docs. So I'm going to go ahead and run that guy. And once that's done, we will go ahead and try to commit our code and see if things are okay. Now, honestly, you do want to make sure that you run all of your tests after you make any kind of these changes. Um, otherwise, what will happen is that when you push up to the GitHub repository, the Circle CI is going to run and it's going to reject your changes anyway. Let's go ahead and run this. And once it's done, we can continue. Now we finished collecting. We're running through our tests now. You know, there's something about Watching loading screens, that's just so much fun. Did it run our API test already? It did, look at that. It was successful. Uh oh. Our Spark Hive dataset isn't working. I'm pretty sure that's because of probably Java issues. And of course, it's not something that we have to worry about for our API data set. Oh, looks like there was a failure here. Perhaps I don't have enough memory. Because I am running my recording software at the same time. 
So while that's still going, let's go ahead and scroll down in our documentation, take a look at the other things that need to happen. So we're going to be running this make test, which is already what we're doing, and then make build docs if we have any documentation changes. As for the branching convention, and this is what we're going to be doing right after the tests finish, we're going to be creating a feature branch. And this feature branch will be, of course, adding JSON parameter to the API dataset. Uh, what's interesting to note here is the backwards compatibility idea. So a, ba a breaking change in Kedro's world is anything that modifies Kedro's public APIs. You know, and, and so it says right here, making a change to the signature of the public functions or removing a module. Um, however, your change is not considered a breaking change if a user can upgrade their Kedro version and include your change without anything breaking in their project. That's actually us. So uh, as long as the, the version here for Huang Lim's original removal of the JSON option right, is for 0.16.2, then this is actually not a breaking change for us since the JSON uh, option would have been removed in this version. That means that by adding it back, we're actually not uh, breaking uh, the, the original changes. And then they talk about a little bit of the release and then how you can potentially contribute back to the core of their library. Uh, and so truth is that the core contribution process is a little bit more uh, strict than the extras contribution. And this is something that we're trying to do. It's important also to create an issue before while we describe our contribution uh, and then working in extras um, then we can create that pull request referencing that issue in the PR description. Uh, so when, while we're waiting for this test to run, and I think actually it might have just failed on us, that's okay, we're going to go ahead and create that issue. Really. Opening up our GitHub page, we're going to go ahead and create our issue first. So for our issue, it's going to be a new issue here, feature request. Here, I'm going to be adding the example from our video that we just did. Okay, so I think that this looks pretty good. And you can see here the preview, our description. Um, it shows that the process by which we need to go through. Uh, what it looks like here as the example, and then the cleaner example, which obviously is much cleaner. Let's go ahead and submit this issue, um, but first let's take a look to make sure our Python tests are running. It looks to me that this guy has simply died. <laughs> let's go ahead and cancel this guy, create that control C. Oh. And by killing that one uh, profiling test, it looks like everything else started running again. I'm going to go ahead and submit this issue now. And I've submitted it as Data Engineer 1. While this guy is still doing his tests, let's go ahead and just clean up our code a little bit. Um, we can do our formatting with black. So if we go into our proper folder here. We use black and flake 8. And so by using black, it automatically formats the, the code for us. And then flake 8 will detect any errors with the, the styling. We're going to do the same for our test. And as you can see, we did reformat our test. Let's see if we can detect our difference here. Not sure exactly what changed, but something did change. And there's nothing to change with Flake. So let's go ahead and commit this guy while we're waiting for the test to run. But first we have to make sure that we're on the right branch. Git checkout dash B, we're doing a feature. Add JSON parameter. And whenever we make a, a change to Kedro, 
part of the procedure is that we have to update our um, the the release dot markdown file. And so what we do is we actually add our name as well as the change that we made. Now, since this is a Data Engineer 1 video, we're actually going to go ahead and write down Data Engineer 1 as the contributor for this today. So going into release.md, we can find the upcoming 0.16.3. Let's go ahead and add in our change. Added a JSON parameter to API dataset for the convenience of generating requests with JSON bodies. What we do next is we add in our name to supporting contributions. And today, this is data engineer one. Great. Let's go ahead and add these into two separate commits. Something that not many people realize about git commits is you can actually selectively choose what, com what changes you want to put into different commits. And so in this case, we're going to put the code commits in one commit and then the release.md change in another commit. What you can do here is you do git add dash p. And so the dash p is the option that allows you to select what changes you want to add in particular. In this case, um, this release.md uh, is the first change that comes up and we can choose to either ignore or add this hunk, stage this hunk for the commit. In this case, we'll go ahead and stage this guy. So I just type in the letter A, and this adds that hunk. And so now all I need to do is I do quit. And if I do git diff staged, I can see that this is the currently staged commit. And if I do git status, we can see our, two mo our three modified files, the release and then our API code. Um, but the only ones that are getting committed is the release.md. Now, of course, obviously you can add and then choose, you can do git add and choose the release.md file. Um, but what is really great about the git add dash p is that you can even selectively choose inside of a single file. Add the notes to release.md. And here it is doing the pre-commit check. And let's go ahead and add in the rest. And while that pre-commit check is going, let's go ahead and take a look again at our tests. And it looks like our build, our documentation build was successful. Looks like we can't go in very far back into the scroll history for PyCharm. Um, I'm assuming that because we had a few failures, that's unfortunate, but they're probably due to reasons outside of our control, given the fact that the only code that we changed was the API data set. So I think we're still safe to push this code up and create a pull request for ourselves. Oh, and it looks like our sorted imports were incorrect. So it actually is fixing it for us. Let's go ahead and commit that one more time. Oh, it looks like we had another failure with PyLint. Uh, and I know it exactly what it is. It's because we did our local import of the JSON. So let's go ahead and open that guy back up one more time. Here it is, 74. Let's pop that up. Right here. Okay, now that we've made our changes to our code, all we have to do is just add the files that we want to, uh, to commit, git add. And there's one in tests as well as inside of Kedro. We have them here. And then we just go ahead and run our commit. So we're gonna git commit, add JSON parameter to API dataset. Hit that button, the pre-commit is going to run. And things are gonna look hunky-dory. Now that we've created the branch that we wish to submit, let's make sure that we have a, a fork of the repo inside of our own GitHub account. That's located on the top right hand corner. We click fork. And then I'm going to make sure that I have the fork inside of my own repository. 
git remote add, and I'm just going to give it uh, a name here, de1. And now I've successfully added a new remote. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push that new branch that we created to the new remote. The reason is because we actually don't have access to push directly to the Quantum Black Labs version of the project. So we can only push to our own version. And so here it is. We have feature add JSON parameter to API dataset that has shown up for us. All we have to do is we click compare and create pull request. Now we have feature add parameter to JSON. And then we're going to make sure that we're merging into the master branch. And we're going to reference our issue. And so our issue is right here, 424, right inside of here, reference. And then we add in a few notes. We then check off our list and go ahead and create the pull request. We have now successfully created a brand new pull request on Kedro, the project. We added back our own changes to this data set for the benefit of not only ourselves, but for the community at large. Now, if you guys have made it this far in the video, make sure you button that like, sub that scribe, and ring that ding if you want to know when we are pipelining. This video ran on much longer than I thought it would, but I hope it gave you a taste on understanding how you can contribute back to Kedro as an open source project. And I really hope I get to see your pull requests on Kedro very soon.